Welcome to the manual G-coding video. Today we will be learning how to write programs with G-codes. Before viewing this video, please read the manual G-coding section in the lab manual. Remember how you made your keychain. In that activity, you created the solid model of the keychain using SolidWorks and then used SolidCam to create the G-codes to run the CNC milling machines to make the part. G-codes are simply a set of commands that tell the machine tool how to move the end mill to make the part. A set of G-codes that can produce a part are called a part program. In this assignment, you will learn how to understand G-codes and how to write your own part programs. The work coordinate system is a coordinate system that is attached to the work piece and is used to position the end mill. This slide shows the orientation and position of a typical work coordinate system. Here you can see the workpiece located on top of the milling machine table. The end mill is shown over here. The end mill is located relative to the origin of the work coordinate system. Specifically, we track the bottom center point of the end mill. Here you can see the origin of the work coordinate system. It is coincident with the corner of the workpiece. Now the orientation of all work coordinate systems is the same. That means that the positive x-axis always comes across the front of the milling machine. The positive y-axis always goes straight back into the um, milling machine and therefore the positive z-axis comes straight up from the milling table or from the top of the workpiece. The z-axis, and in fact the z-axis plane where z is equal to zero, this plane is very important to us because if this point of the end mill is located, right, has a z-coordinate of z less than zero, then there's a good chance that the end mill is cutting the the workpiece material. And we need to make sure that the end mill is going slow enough and turning fast enough right, so that it doesn't break. There are two ways to specify the location of the end mill. The first way is to use absolute coordinates. Absolute coordinates locate the tool relative to the work coordinate system. Incremental coordinates, on the other hand, Locate the end mill relative to its last position. The code for absolute coordinates is G90, and the code for incremental coordinates is G91. To illustrate the difference, consider the two points shown below. If we call out a G90 in our part program, then we are operating under absolute coordinates. And the position of point 1 relative to the work coordinates shown above is 1 in the x and 1 in the y. If we go look at point 2, its position would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the x and 1, 2, 3 in the y. Now, if we had called out G91 for incremental coordinates, the position of point 1 would be unknown because we don't know the previous position of the tool. But we could determine the position of point 2 relative to point 1, assuming that the tool has moved from point 1 to point 2. In fact, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 in the x and 1, 2 in the y. Those are the coordinates of point 2 relative to point 1 or point 2 in incremental coordinates. The G90 code is used for rapidly moving the end mill from one point to another point in a straight line. The important thing to remember about G90 is that it will cause the machine tool to move the end mill as fast as the machine can. For instance, 
In the Haas milling machines, the end mill will move faster than you can track it with your eyes. Therefore, G90 is never used for cutting material, only positioning the end mill above the workpiece. In addition, the end mill will move in a straight line between its uh, position and the next position. If the workpiece or the clamps used to hold down the workpiece are in between the start point and the end point, the machine tool will experience what is called a crash. And you will have done uh, extremely expensive damage to the milling machine. So please be careful. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. The format for the G00 code is essentially G00 X and a number that represents its position, Y, another number, and Z, another number. And the X, Y, and Z represent the coordinates of the endpoint for the end mill. Now let's take a look at the coordinate system below. If point one is located at one comma one, and point two is located at four in the x and five in the y, how could we use the rapid positioning command to go from point one to point two? Well, first of all, you have to understand which, whether you're in absolute or incremental coordinates. So if we start looking at the absolute coordinate example, we'd have a G90 call out, then a G00 with the coordinates of point 2, X4 and Y5. But if we were using incremental coordinates, we'd start out with a G91 and then the same G00 code but now we'd be looking at the difference in the X and the Y coordinates from point 1 to point 2 so it would be X3 and then Y4 make sure that looks like a Y and even though I said five, 4, I wrote 5. So there's, a, there's the first problem. Now that you've learned to position the end mill and move the end mill, it's time to learn how to make chips. The G01 code is for cutting. The G01 code has a format very similar to G00. Again, it's G01, X, and then a number, Y, a number, and Z, a number. But now we have this other parameter called F, which is a number, and F stands for the feed rate. And the feed rate is how fast the end mill will move in the material. And feed rates are often given in units of inches per minute. The feed rates depend on how hard the material is and how strong or robust our machine is. So let's go to an example. Let's take uh, P1 and put it at 1 comma 1 and let's take P2 and put that at 6 comma 2 and again to use the G01 code we're gonna have to know whether we're in incremental or absolute coordinates so our first one we'll do we'll call out a G90 for absolute coordinates 
and of course I want to go from P1 to P2. G01 is going to let me do that in a straight line. So then I call out G01 X 6 for the endpoint, Y2 for the endpoint, and for F I'll use the generic 40 inches per minute. Now if we were going to do that in absolute coordinates, I call out a G91, then a G01, and now I would use my incremental coordinates for point 2. Or X is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units relative to point 1, and Y goes up just one unit. And the feed rate is the same for both absolute and incremental coordinates. So remember, linear interpolation is for cutting in a straight line. This is the end of part one. To learn to create arcs and how to finish your part program, please view part two. Thank you.